Hey there, and welcome to the very first episode of Broken Lord Order. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Tomb King's extended roster and campaign mechanics, the Hunter and the Beast patch. Jesus, that's a long name. Alright, we're going to be taking a look at the Tomb King's Doom compilation pack. I don't understand why the hell he went with a different name anyway. What sounds better, extended roster and campaign mechanics, or DOOM? Alright, now in the interest of disclosure, I will say the Tomb Kings are probably my favorite faction in the game, tied only perhaps by the Vampirates. So any mod that does what this does, with all of its new units, all of its new technologies, all of its new gameplay mechanics, such as slavery taken from the Dark Elves, probably off to a really good start. So each legendary lord gets their own little tweaks and techs, so Cetra, of course, being the chariot lord, most of his stuff is biased around, you know, horsemen and chariots. Katap, of course, being the, the Lich Priest, or the High Lich Priest, or whatever you want to call him. Of course, all his stuff is biased around Liches and around Magicka in general. Um, of course, Kalita is going to be all about ranged play with, you know, just a dash of poisoning. Now, there is a lot more changes done with her that I'll talk about later. Uh, and, of course, last up is Archon, who has, you know... All of his stuff is based around the sort of vampire side of things and that sort of hybridization, which is kind of a neat trick with him, too. Now, unfortunately, New Mass doesn't really get anything outside of the general changes, so the slave mechanics, new units, that kind of stuff. Uh, but on the upshot, the Dread Kings actually are fully integrated with this, so if you do use old versus new, they're all fixed up for you. One thing I will say is that this takes the Dread Kings from a little powerful to gratuitously overpowered. Alright, so the opening three seconds of a new campaign and we are already demonetized. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and pick Kalita to get started here, just because I do feel like she's been given the most love out of all the legendary lords. Not that I have an issue with that, Kalita was my favorite in the base game anyways. Um, but as we get started here, I'm actually going to show you one of the very first issues I have in the game, which is that almost all of this new content requires a tier 5 settlement in order to do, which effectively means that all of the minor settlements in this game now become effectively worthless. Now it's not game breaking or anything, you're given so many more options and so much more power overall that you're certainly not going to be held back by this at all. It's just, it's kind of disappointing when you go and invade an entire province, but you really only end up using the major settlement instead. Um, hopefully down the road they can pick and choose and sort of grab a couple of the things that are all the way up at tier 5 and maybe move them down to tier 4 so the minor settlements can go back to being useful. Uh, like many players, I use the tier 4 minor, minor settlements mod, but even with that, there's absolutely zero use for the minor settlements apart from a little bit of bonus gold or bonus happiness. Alright, getting started on turn 2 here. You can see Kalita's been given uh, a brother big change right out the gates. She now has artillery, so like the other three legendary lords, she doesn't have to sit and twiddle her thumbs while she waits for rams or towers to be built on major settlements. This was one of the huge issues I had with Kalita in the base game, so even though it's a fairly small tweak in, in theory, it actually makes a huge difference to how she plays. Um, one of those new units that is responsible for that, as you can see on the right hand side, is the Bone Splitter Artillery piece. In the middle, I believe they are called the Cobra Asp Legion. They are one of the various new skeletal archers added into the game, uh, which actually ties in remarkably well with Kalita and her ranged focus. And of course you can see some of the other new things added in here, the great weapons, dual axes, whip units, uh, there's quite a lot added in actually, you have a ton of options thanks to this. Approximately 10 hours later. Ugh, 10 hours later was underselling it, this took forever. Uh, anyways, I wanted to get later on into the tech tree so I could show you a few of the legendary lords that you unlock through the technologies, such as Alcazar the Second and King Satep. So as you can see on Alcazar here, he has unique items and skill tree unlocks, and there's even additional gods for all of them that make him a lot more unique to use. So for example, Alcazar the Second here is all about chariots. He's got just bonuses out the yin-yang for himself on a chariot, and of course for his other chariot units. Um, continuing on, Satep is more of like a, a general, well, I guess general. Um, he makes all of his uh, units uh, get experience faster and has general benefits for things like Tomb Guard and basic skeleton units. And of course, just like uh, Alcazar II, he's got unique items and access to those additional gods too. Uh, it goes a long way to really fleshing them out. It's, uh, it's, it's amazing how much stuff this mod actually adds in really. 
It's actually how I found this mod, if I'm being honest. I used to have mods that make all of the tech unlocked legendary lords unique. Unfortunately, mine became outdated, and when I was looking for a solution to that, I ended up stumbling across this one, so good job, Agimook. All right, so we'll get to the wrap-up in just a sec. I just wanted to show off uh, some of these units in battle so you could sort of see what they look like down at the finite level and also, you know, how they all sort of perform. So some of the stuff you'll be seeing is, is we've got the Hyro Titan using the Colossus Bow. We've got the Bone Splitter Artillery Platform, which is the artillery given to Kalita at the start of her campaign. It's recruited out of the third tier of the Chariot lineup, if memory serves. There's also things like uh, Corsairs, we've got Skeletons with Great Weapons, the Cobra Legion, which is uh, some, one of the new Archer units added in by this. Um, you're going to kind of notice a trend, though, as the battle gets going. I, I mean, all these options given to the Tomb Kings just, like I said, completely obliterates balance for them. Full disclosure, I mean, this battle's on easy, but even then, I mean, there's zero, zero difficulty in this battle. One of the things that the Tomb Kings has going for them that none of the other factions have to have going for them is none of the Tomb King units have upkeep. So all of these incredible units, even if they're sort of difficult to get access to at first, once you've got access to them, you can just utterly trounce the enemies with them in multiple factions. I mean, even in the battle, what you're already seeing, we've barely gotten going. We're less than two minutes in, and the enemy's already starting to crumble out of existence. I mean, things actually get worse from this in terms of balance as the game progresses into the later stage. Like, once I had Tier 5 stuff running around, I, this was... There wasn't even a challenge anymore. I could pretty much just start the battle, run off, go make myself a sandwich, come on back and see the victory splash screen definitely needs to be reined back in quite a bit I would suggest um, the other option of course is just ratchet up the difficulty a bunch of levels and let that turn the difficulty up for you anyways to get back into it this is the bone splitter artillery piece it's one of a bunch of new artillery platforms added in for the tomb kings <laughs> this actually makes the tomb kings probably the single greatest artillery faction in the game Maybe a Vampirates faction with Queen Bess can probably hang out with them, but for example, like Kalita's opening artillery platforms that you get, plus I've got a single casket of souls added in there, I never once came across a faction that could outperform me in a ranged battle. Continuing on with our overwhelming firepower, you're going to see here we got the Cobra Legions of Libaris. They're one of the new archer units added in by this. They're actually the bottom rung of the archer units added in by this, and even then, they're still brutally powerful. I'd say they're probably on par with High Elves and Dark Elves in terms of damage outputs. Um, I mean, as you can see here, before the battle's even beginning in earnest, they've already had one unit crumble out of existence, and so there's another two crumbling away right now, and we haven't even had a melee unit pop into the fight yet. Um, things probably need to be ratcheted down a bit. The other archer units added in by this have even more range and even more damage output from here. Alright, and as we finally get into melee, we're going to show off the first uh, new melee unit added in by this, which is the Amazon Warriors using spears. Now, I mentioned earlier in the video that this adds in Amazons as a new additional factor for Kalita, and these are the lowest tier of those offerings that you'll get. I really like the Amazons added in by this because they're completely different from everything else added in. They're all living units, so all of those extra factors around healing undead and reju rejuvenating and all that kind of stuff, it doesn't affect the Amazons, which actually ends up making them less overpowered than everything else, which is a really cool factor. I'm going to quickly shoot over to the other side of the map before the enemy crum crumbles out of existence. You can see a bunch of new units in here. We've got Amanotep's Corsair Legion, uh, Nehekarans with uh, great weapons, uh, basic skeletons with great weapons. Again, all new things added in by the mod. I really like the Corsair Legions because they're part of the ports. So your ports actually ended up giving you uniques. Uh, unique units such as the Corsair Legion, you'll end up with uh, like breaching axes and stuff like that. It's a really neat little factor because ordinarily you don't have much to do with the ports as the Tomb Kings because your income's so horrid to begin with. They don't really have much of a purpose. But I mean, there you go, right? Barely over four minutes and the enemy's completely crumbled out of existence. We haven't lost a single squad. In fact, we've barely lost anyone at all. Like I said, the, the power levels this adds into the Tomb Kings probably needs to be leashed back in quite a good bit 
If you are going to use them, the only recommendation I would make is bump up your normal difficulty one level. So if you're playing medium, throw it up to hard. If you're playing hard, throw it up to very hard, so on and so forth. Um, otherwise, you're going to find this is way too easy. I normally keep these on easy when I'm testing out new mods, just so I can get into the content a bit quicker. But I mean, this just barely wasn't fun at this point. Uh, nothing could really stand up to me. So this does add in a few things for Katep and Archon the Black. Uh, it doesn't add in much for Cetra. He does get the new technologies and, of course, all the general changes, but nothing kind of Cetra-specific that I've noticed. Um, so Archon gets a bunch of Vampirate stuff added into him, like Depth Guard and Terror, Ge Terror Geist and a bunch of other little knickknacks. Katep gets Cultists, which are effectively flamethrower units. Um, they're both kind of neat little additions. Unfortunately, I couldn't show them off because both of them crash out immediately when selecting custom battles and to start two more campaigns would have driven this up from you know 20 hours of gameplay to you know 30 plus and I just it was way too much footage for that kind of stuff um, the cool thing is is you can sort of get a, a sneak preview of this so the lich priests have a flamethrower attack already added in somewhat similar to how the cultists act the other cool thing is that they can end up hopping onto a casket of souls which is Absolutely hilarious too, he, even more artillery overpoweredness, right? So in spite of Kadrin's mod manager showing me a whopping 505 conflicts, it actually integrated just peachy with uh, the two major overhauls that I have, which of course is Mixu's Legendary Lords Unlocked, or the Unlocker I guess it's called, and uh, Old vs. New. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the video, Old vs. New has some nice integration into this, whereas Mixu's uh, mod unlocker doesn't really have anything added into it. New Moss will still get the generic stuff added in, but it doesn't have anything specific like old versus new does. But like I said, absolutely zero issues running those. In fact, none of my Tomb Kings changes seem to butt heads with this in any capacity. So it was really nice to see. So that brings us to the wrap up then. I gotta say, I cannot speak highly enough of what Ajamuk's done here. Uh, this feels like DLC, if not better than DLC. The amount of changes, the amount of additions, the amount of love put into this is incredible. You've got additional gods, unique legendary lords, new units, new buildings, unique factors for each faction, unique techs for each faction. It's This is utterly incredible to witness. Do I recommend you download this particular mod? Absolutely. You know, I ragged on it a little bit earlier for you know requiring so many tech 5 structures and of course having ridiculously potent unit options but none of that matters when you actually get down and start playing with it this is 100 percent a mod worth downloading go out and get it right now links to the mod are down below i strongly recommend them